Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got a really cool knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Devo Stout, designed by Lefty EDC and I think CM underscore knife designs on Instagram. I'm so sorry if I got that wrong. This is uh, available right now, or at least in the at the time that I was recording this video. I pre-record all my content. Um, I'll provide a link right down in the description where you can take a look if you're watching the future and the pre-order ends. Sorry about that. Um, these should ship according to the website sometime between September and August of this year. So pretty quickly. Uh, thank you so much to Urban EDC Supply and Lefty EDC. I believe this is his uh, for sending this in for me to take a look at. This will go back. I don't get to keep this. This will go back as soon as I'm done with it. Thanks to my generous patrons for supporting me. There's a link for Patreon right down below. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. So this comes with a nice little pouch. I mean, I understand, you know, who, who cares really that much, um, but it's just a little bit different, a little bit more robust. It also comes with an extra set of hardware, according to the website, which is a big deal. That's a big deal. That's a little thing that they don't have to do, but they did it, and I think that's great. So just keep that in mind. Uh, let's go ahead and get a measurement of this guy. Overall length of the Devo Stout coming in at 7.6 inches. Blade length is coming in at about 3.3, and your cutting edge is coming in at about 3 inches. How about some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rad Model 1 and the Ontario Rad Model 2? Uh, this still feels like a full-size knife, and it's I would say it's right in between these two. There's a lot, actually, there's a ton of good things about the size of this. Uh, how about up against the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3? Definitely closer to the Para 3, not too far off but still a bigger knife overall. Last but not least, let's put it up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, and the Benchmade Bugout. About the same length overall, just a hair longer than the Benchmade Bugout. And then your cutting edge, Bugout's got it by just a smidge, right? But there's a pretty roomy choil there, which we're gonna talk about. How's the action on this guy? <laughs> Moly, the action's really good. The action is incredibly smooth. <laughs> I couldn't imagine that this is a whole lot different than the one, I mean, that his is a whole lot different than the ones that are going to show. I mean, they're, they're, I'm going to guess that this is like a 99.9% .9 prototype, or maybe it's the production sample of everything that's going to ship. I'm going to guess they're all going to be incredibly smooth. I do not know who the OEM of this is. I'm going to guess that it's made in China because there's a lot of indicators and I it's kind of given right at that at this point, um, which is fine. There's a lot of really great, super high quality Chinese OEMs making some really great stuff, right? Um, and this is uh, this is obviously mega high quality. So whoever the OEM is, they're doing just as good a job, if not a little bit better than a lot of their competition, for sure. Uh, we are looking at CPM 20 CV for the blade steel, um, titanium for the frame, and some micarta for the scales. You have a couple of different options. It's like all black or tumbled. I would definitely prefer this one. I think it looks really, really great. Um, by the way, the detent is tuned perfectly for using this little thumb thing, that thumb opening slot. You can definitely thumb it out like that. I think it's a lot more comfortable to just reverse flick it. Access to the uh, lock bar is pretty good. I kind of wish this side was cut a little bit lower, but there's still enough cut out there, enough scalloped out on this side that it makes it reasonably comfortable to disengage. And it also will fall nicely because of that roomy forward cho choil right down to your thumb if you want to do that with one hand. It's really, really fidgety, very easy to play with, right? Very easy to deploy uh, if you're going to use it in a work setting, et cetera, et cetera. Let's go ahead and do carry profile. So thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. You can see here it's really not all that thick. It's about the same as the Para 3. Length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. Uh, we're about the same overall length closed as the Para 3. Definitely shorter than the PM2. And even at maximum height, it down, which is down here, it's still not as tall. This is going to be a pretty comfortable object to carry in your pocket. Let's go ahead and weigh it. Like I said, micarta, titanium, and 20 CV. There's no milling on the inside because the frame gets pretty skinny to accept the uh, micarta scales. Weight is coming in at 3.92 ounces. So not perfect ratios, but not bad at all. I'm sorry, we have an update, 3.88 ounces from my scale. <laughs> not bad at all. 
Uh, it uh, it definitely isn't going to be uh, a pocket hog if you carry more than one object in your knife pocket. Um, but if you only carry your knife in your knife pocket, you should be all right. Um, unless you're wearing, you know, wax paper pants or something like that, it probably won't work. But regular pants, you're going to be just fine. How about a hardware check? Let's get out my tools. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. I think those are actually, I think the pivot's actually a T10. Let's take a look. That's what it looks like. T10. Nice. And then, are, did do we have T8 hardware? Hmm? Is that what we're looking at? Yeah, let's take a look here. Very good. T8. This is also a T8. One screw for that. And then we probably have a couple more down here. I would think it's probably safe to say that those are T8. But even if they are T6, not that big of a deal. A few extra screws. Pretty simple construction, though. Shouldn't be that difficult to take apart. Um, blade stock thickness. That's what we need to do. I'm going to guess that that's probably about 120 to 130 thousandths. We're looking at, oh no, it's a little bit more. It says 137. Mm, there's no way that that's 140. There's, I just refuse to believe that. Yeah, it's closer to 135,000. So there you go. Not too thick, not too thin. That's kind of that perfect in-between thickness. Of course, it depends on how the blade is shaped and the geometry down to the cutting edge, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, meat and potato time. Holy crap, this thing has awesome ergonomics. This is a great way to do this. When you, I know you guys are looking at this edge and thinking, is that how they're going to come? I doubt it. <laughs> this looks like <laughs> this looks like an edge that was put on maybe by Lefty or somebody else. It's beautiful. I very much doubt that the production edge looks like that. It's much more likely you're going to get a you know something that looks like this, just like a machine, like a factory machine edge, something like that, which is fine. Um, sharing. Uh, the uh, space between the frame and the blade for the choil is an awesome way to do this. Uh, the amount of room that I have on this handle, even when I'm choked back, I can still get four fingers on it, but choked up, man, this is awesome. I love this. There's no part of me that there's so much room in that choil. And since we have this area right here, which is not aggressive at all, it's more of just a hill and not a peak, like a volcano or anything like that. You're not really forced into any one spot. You can get right up there next to the edge if you want. You can rock back just a little bit. It is super, super comfortable. The one thing I wonder is why no jimping up here? This is absolutely a knife I would take out and use. It's not delicate in any way. God, that is easy to, it's just so ridiculously easy to manipulate. Um, but yeah, why no jumping? Uh, jumping. What am I saying? What did I, what word did I say? Jumping? Um, there's a little notch back here, which is also kind of nice. I mean, he could have added jumping all the way up here. He didn't, but no big deal. The spine is also slightly radius. I think he called this blade shape a sheep's poon. <laughs> that's sheep spoon is how I'm going to say it. But when you read it or look at the word, you can read it and think whatever you want. I am certain that that was done on purpose. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, the blade shape is super cool. I love for EDC, the dropped nose. That's fantastic for your draw cuts, things like that. There's a little bit of belly in here. Uh, plenty robust flat. And I really like how the swedge looks. The, honestly, the blade shape is really cool. The whole knife looks cool, and it's incredibly utilitarian. Uh, down at the cutting edge, it does get reasonably thin. It's not razor thin, but it does get reasonably thin. You can see the taper right here. It'll cut. It'll slice. Um, it's going to do the trick, and there's nothing in the cutting path except for this opening hole, which is fine. And those edges are nicely, nicely knocked down. Should we talk about the finish? I think we should, because this is my favorite Type of tumbled finish. It looks so good. Pretty high reflectivity, but a nice, uh, you know, sort of even um, sort of scratch pattern here. It's just beautiful. No yellowy, weird, looks like, there's nothing that looks like belt burn or anything like that. It just looks great. <laughs> it's so smooth. This is definitely going to glide through material. I mean, for the geometry, right? It's nice. Because of the slightly radius spine, all of these edges are nicely knocked down, which is really nice if you're going to get your finger up there, right? Uh, not nice if you want to strike flint off your pocket knife, but I, all right. You probably brought a fixed blade, right? If you're striking flint, you're probably not do the, doing that in your, in your living room, right? 
And if you're doing it in the setting where, you know, that would be appropriate, you probably brought something else, right? So anyways, um, but yeah, the blade is wonderful and there's nothing on it. There's literally just nothing on the blade unless there's something different with the full production versions versus this one, nothing on it. I'm gonna guess not because they put their logo right there, which is fine. That's a nice place to put that if the logo looks good. And yeah, the logo does look good. It just says DK, right? And then the adjustment head is over here. Edges on all of this are soup. Look how rounded that is. This is just nice. Transition from here to, from the titanium to the micarta is also wonderful uh, on both sides. It just looks excellent. Seating of the hardware is great. You have a mounting position for left-handed carry on this side, even though it's a right-handed frame lock. Um, lefties, you know what? I'm not left-handed and I can tell you this is pretty freaking easy to manipulate. So I don't think you'll have that much of an issue. Would be nice if every right-handed frame lock came in lefty form, but it doesn't. So what are you going to do? Oh my gosh, guys, there's no lanyard hole. Anyways, the backspacer also looks nice. It's pretty typical, just kind of a flush backspacer, but it looks good, right? There's nothing really to complain about there. Uh, it's a wire clip. And I don't really like that. The wire clip always just kind of is, it just, there's no personality in the clip. It's uh, kind of functional. I don't like it when the bill points down. I wish it just was an upward sweeping tip. I don't know why for this, but it will, it will, it'll do its job. It carries pretty deep, right? And honestly, in and out of the pocket, once you get this over the seam of your pocket, you're just gonna have to fight it a bit, right? So it's gonna be one of those things where you're kind of holding the pocket and you're pushing it down and trying to get it over like that. Not that big of a deal. Nice smooth surface, so it's not gonna fray up your pants. Definitely good retention. These are generally good style clips. I just would have preferred a milled titanium clip that went along with the personality of the knife. You can definitely still have that and make it just as functional, arguably better, in the function department than this, if the bill were corrected, at least, you know, by my, uh, by my standards. <laughs> it's an okay clip. I just don't, it just takes away from the personality a little bit, right? And uh, hey, you, if you got, if you got a problem with that, you're like, oh my God, what's this guy talking about? I'm a knife enthusiast. Do you know where you are? Welcome to my channel. I'm a knife enthusiast. I'm definitely going to talk about that stuff. Anyways, the... <laughs> <laughs> the uh, This is a nice way to do this. It's not an exposed frame lock, which means when you are deploying it, manipulating it, there's pretty much no chance you're gonna put unnecessary pressure on that lock bar. Even in use, the vast majority of your squeeze is probably gonna go into this part of the frame, which doesn't move, or the micarta. It's probably not likely you're going to squeeze that lock bar into the tang of the blade, which is definitely a problem on an exposed frame lock. I like these and liner locks way better than exposed frame locks because they're not exposed, right? Lock bar insert that doubles as the over travel stop, which is kind of overkill because of the micarta scale, but that's fine, it's not hurting anything. Lock up on this guy, we're coming in probably 65%, something like that, which is fine. The contact is good and there's definitely no blade play. No lock stick whatsoever, incredibly smooth. No pivot lash. We have an internal stop pin, I believe that follows the blade. Can we see it? Where are you, stop pin? You must be here. Oh, it's back here, I'm sorry. Uh, are we gonna be able to see, there it is. Can you see that little reflections there? It's following and so it, fall, it runs on, uh, it's it, two uh, lugs attached to the blade. They run on channels on the frame on either side. So you get an extra point of contact versus a traditional stop pin, and that's nice. Adds a little stability when you're trying, that's probably why it's so solid and the action's so good, right? Well, it's not just that, but generally it helps with that, right? This is running on bearings and it's incredibly smooth, um, but it helps with that. It's definitely gonna lock up solid as long as the pivot is tightened down the way it's supposed to be. We also have absolutely perfect centering and no pivot lash, which is great. Seriously, the only thing that I don't like about this knife is the pocket clip. And the pocket clip is still like, okay. If I had to give it a letter grade, I'd give it a C. That's, you know, darn. Everything else that I grade on the knife, I'd give it an A, right? This is a great design. It's a little bit over the three inch mark. So people who live in areas where that's a problem, just be cognizant of that. Wait, or yeah, it was the cutting edge. The blade is over three inches. So be cognizant of that. But 
The amount of cutting edge that you get for the amount of comfortable ergonomic room is just wonderful. And disengaging the knife, uh, deploying the blade, or just manipulating it in general is so friendly and easy. This is a straightforward, good design. It's not reinventing the wheel. This isn't anything that we've not seen before. The blade shape is pretty unique. I like that. Um, but there's just a lot of good choices were made when they were designing this, right? It's good. Uh, and people are gonna like it. What's the price? Pre-order price is 270 bucks, and honestly, I think that's fair. It would have been really great if I if we could have gotten a milled clip on this, right? But considering you get an incredible design, the appropriate materials, right? Really friendly manipulation. This is this is a friend to somebody looking for a straightforward, utilitarian, day-to-day -day cutting tool with a little bit of spice for the enthusiast, right? To the average person, this just looks like a pocket knife to the person who's carrying it. They're gonna know it's a little bit more than that, right? Just a really, really friendly design. You get a you get a nice pouch, which is not really that big of a deal, but you do get extra hardware. Um, so yeah, I think that price is very fair. And I hope that they continue to do things like this in the future. Um, this is an extremely recommendable knife. If you can get your hands on it, uh, if, you, if there's still time to pre-order, do it. If there's not time to pre-order and you have an opportunity to pick one up on the secondary market for a good deal, do it. This is a cool knife. It'll be going on my recommended knives playlist. Short and sweet review, at least short and sweet for my channel. Very cool. This will be headed back to, I think, Lefty EDC or Urban EDC Supply here shortly. Thanks again for uh, letting me take a look. Make sure you guys check out the links in the description. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.